Have you ever wondered what could have happened if the rich young ruler followed Jesus instead of walking away grieved? It's God's will for you to walk in abundance. Today, discover what it takes to experience the miracle of increase in your own life without letting it pass you by. Turn with me to Mark chapter 10. I want to show you something. The Lord's been talking to me about this. <clears throat> He's ministered to glory and me out of this for many, many years, many, many times. But then just here recently again, it's, it's, it's stirred in me once more in this incident in the life of Jesus. 17th verse, when he, Jesus, was gone forth into the way, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery, do not kill, do not steal, do not bear false witness, defraud not, honor thy father and mother. He answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Oh, that's always, every time I read this, it just thrills me. Jesus beholding him loved him. Oh, that talks to me, doesn't you? Jesus beholding him loved him and said unto him, one thing thou lackest. Now that's pretty good. I've never heard him say that to me. <laughs> Kenneth, only one thing you like. It's more like, Kenneth, there's only 200 things you like. <laughs> no, I've learned that when in, in his role in correcting us as a loving father and a generous Lord, a generous God, he won't pile it all, all on you at one time. He'll talk to you about one thing and you know, you get to working on that. And then a little while later, he say, <clears throat> uh, <laughs> there's something else here I need. <laughs> I'd like to visit with you about it. You know? yeah. Amen. He's so good. But I have heard him say, what are you going to do about this? Well, there ain't no use lying. <laughs> well, that's not good. Well, Lord, I, uh, I really didn't intend to do anything about it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking about one particular incident right now. He said, why not? I said, well, uh, hmm. I was afraid I'd make a mistake. He said, knowing you, Kenneth, you probably will. <laughs> but he said, the biggest mistake you could possibly make is be disobedient because you're afraid you make a mistake. He said, you make a mistake in this and I can fix it. Whoa, it wasn't as big a problem as I thought it was, but it was certainly in my way, particularly financially because I was disobedient. Now, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast and give to the poor. Thou shalt have treasure in heaven Come, take up the cross and follow me. Oh, that is very, very important. I believe that this could very well have been Judas' replacement. Huh? This is a wealthy man. And he's, 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 he's very, he's very observant. He's, he's, he's strong in the word, loves God and God loved him. But, and really now when you think about it, he said, take up the cross and come go to work for me. Now God will give you instructions but not explanations. When he gives instructions, now it's your turn. Amen. 
then you accept it. Now, then again, it's his turn and he'll give you the next step. But if he gave you the whole thing, you wouldn't be walking by faith. So we walk by faith and not by sight. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved. Now, what does that tell us? Grief comes from a sense of loss. It grieved him. He thinks it's going to cost him everything he has. And he left. Had he not left, he could have heard the rest of this teaching. But because he left, he missed it. He got sad and mad and left. Grief separated him from the major biggest opportunity of his life. For he had great possessions. Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? Now listen to verse 24. And the disciples were astonished at his words. Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? Now, there's the problem. Not having riches, but trusting them. If you trust them, they become your God. And you grieve when you lose your God. That trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle. Now, there was a, uh, there's a, a, a small gate in Jerusalem called the camel's gate. Or, no, the, excuse me, the needle, the needle gate. It's a small gate. You could get a camel through there, but not loaded. You had to take all that the camel's carrying and get the animal through, and then take all the stuff through and repack. So now you know what he's referring to. You got all that stuff on you, you can't thread the needle. Praise God. <clears throat> It's easier for a camel to go through the eye of the needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they were astonished out of measure, saying among themselves, who then can be saved? Who then can be saved? Jesus, looking upon them, said, with men it is impossible, but not with God. For with God, all things are possible. Now, my question to you tonight is who are you with? Who do you run with? My dad, when I had the opportunity as a young man to work with him and, and he would walk into a, a client or walk into a place of business, he'd say, um, my name's A.W. Copeland. I'm with National Old Line Insurance Company, Little Rock, Arkansas. That impressed me. And, I, and I, then I got in the ministry and I thought, my name's Kenneth Copeland and I'm with God. <laughs> yes. I'm with God. Thank you very much. Praise God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I don't preach myself happy. Praise God. <clears throat> Then Peter began to say unto him. Now, Peter began to say, this means that he began to discuss this with Jesus. And the summary of what he said is this. Lo, we have left all and have followed thee. Jesus answered and said, Verily I say unto you, there is 
No man. No man. No person. Man or woman. No person. This is not talking about man as in gender. This is talking about mankind. There is no man that hath left house or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my sake and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time. Houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, and lands, not wives. <laughs> Houses. Houses, lands. God fully intends for his people. God created the heavens and the earth. Then he gave the earth to mankind to have dominion over it. Amen. To take authority over it. We have something to say in this earth. You shall receive a hundredfold in this time houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, children, lands with persecutions and in the world to come eternal life. Don't ignore the persecution part, but ignore the persecution. Don't be paying a bunch of attention to that. Read the fourth chapter of the book of Mark and you find out what persecution is about. No, it's not God trying to teach you and me something. He said persecutions come for the word's sake. And you get on the word of God and Satan's going to fight you. Amen. Amen. But he's defeated. And and his, his biggest stronghold has always been financial. That's the way he has held such a grip on the body of Christ all these years, teaching and preaching poverty. I'm going to tell you something. All you pastors, listen to me. (laughs) Teaching poverty to the people from whom you receive offerings is stupid. Amen. (laughs) Boy, don't be doing that. No, no. No, no. The people prosper as they're taught. That's right. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, I'll do that. Turn back to the sixth chapter of Mark. Mark chapter six. <clears throat> and look with me. Most people begin this, this passage of scripture with the 35th verse, when the day was now far spent, his disciples came to him and said, there's a desert place, da, da, da. Now, but, it, but go back and look <clears throat> at the 34th verse. <clears throat> Jesus, when he came out, saw much people and was moved with compassion toward them because they were as sheep, not having a shepherd. And he began to teach them many things. Then the disciples came to him, interrupted his teaching and ministering to tell him it's getting late. (laughs) Sometimes (laughs) words just kind of fail me, (laughs) you know? I mean, you come. (laughs) 
But now see, they were not paying any attention. They were worried. We're out here in the middle of this place. Look at uh, people. What are we going to do with them? It gets dangerous out here in the dark. Can't anybody see how to get home? What are we going to do? Verse 37, Jesus answered and said unto them, you give them to eat. What? Now, what I wanted you to see here, particularly, particularly pastors, he taught them many things. This great miracle of increase was because faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And they were listening and he taught them many things. The miracle happened in their hands because he gave it to his disciples. They handed it to the people. <laughs> and as the people passed it on, it just kept being more. Gloria used to make a casserole that, that our kids named more <laughs> because the whole family liked it so much that we'd say, we want, we want some more. And, and well, particularly John, I want more mama. Give me some more, more. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Can you see that? Can you see where that miracle came from? The people had faith for it. Amen. The disciples didn't. They obeyed, but he taught them many things. Hallelujah. And so in a crowd under the influence of his compassion and his teaching, faith rose to a high level. They didn't care what time of day it was. Amen. Their hope was high. Their faith was high and they ate more than they could hold and faith paid for it. Yeah. Somebody say amen. Glory. Yeah. To God. Thank you, Lord Jesus. <clears throat> okay, let's go back over to 10th chapter. He shall receive a hundredfold now in this time and in the world to come eternal life with persecutions. When people that live, walk by faith. <laughs> You're going to get persecuted in whatever you do. When my dad began to prosper back when I was just a young kid, dad and mother, oh, you talk about a tither. My dad had two bank accounts and he never let them get mixed up. And I'd, I'd go to bank with him and he, he'd, he would, he'd take his, his deposit and take his tithe out of his deposit and put it over in his tithe account. Amen. But very, very strong man to tithe. My mother, very strong to tithe, taught me that. And uh, it was amazing how God took care of him over the years. So, When that revelation on the laws that govern prosperity, I began to study it as a young man. And this, this is before I was born again. This is before I knew anything about spiritual laws and so forth. But I began to study that. And uh, laws that govern it. What was there in common with wealthy people come from different backgrounds, but what did they have in common? And it became very, very interesting thing. And then I got over and I, and I found uh, that spiritual law, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. By what law works? No, but by the law of faith. These are the spiritual law. Everything happens in the spirit before it happens in the natural world. It, you believe it and it's settled in the spirit and then it'll manifest in the physical world. People want to get it manifest in the physical world. It doesn't come there first. It can't come there first. 
supernaturally. Amen. 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 So persecution is coming, particularly, particularly when you begin to believe God financially. And I remember when my dad first began to prosper, there were some members of our own family that thought, now, wait a minute. I mean, you know, he's raised this country as we are. Well, how, how, how's this happening for him? Well, it's because he and mother got a hold of the laws that govern it. And they are the laws that govern seed time and harvest. Amen. And the more you get in touch with those laws and the laws of faith, and the more you lay hold of those, the stronger they work and you come to the place where you're like what's stated in the book of Ephesians, let him that stole steal no more, but let him work with his hands that which is good in order that he may have for a living? No. In order that he may have to give. Amen. The wealth is in the hundredfold. See, you start where you are. You honor God with what's his first. Amen. Then if you don't have much, do just say, Lord, I need seed. Then when he provides you seed, don't eat it, sow it. <laughs> Amen. Besuchen Sie kcm-de.org oder wählen Sie 07621 422 2861, um mehr über Kenneth Copeland Ministries zu erfahren, um Gebet zu bitten und auch glaubensstärkendes Material zu finden. Kontaktieren Sie Freunde und Partner auf Facebook bei Kenneth Copeland Ministries auf Deutsch. Vergessen Sie bis zum nächsten Mal nicht, Gott liebt Sie und Jesus ist Herr.